The only way humans can explore the solar system is through faster than light travel. Will people ever be able to travel at the speed of light? Yes, a new study indicates. The warp drive is a potential answer to the issue of traveling at the speed of light or even faster. The science fiction series made famous by Star Trek is still going strong. We would travel through space and time instantly if we could figure out a technique to bend or warp space-time. Science fiction has mostly continued to be the domain of warp drives. However, a series of fresh insights into the structure of space and time, made by a German scientist, suggests that Einstein's supposedly unbreakable speed limit might not be so impenetrable after all. Does that imply that bending space-time allows for faster-than-light travel and that we have found the secret to astronomical space exploration? The universe's fastest ever occurrence is light. This fact has only sometimes been understood, though. Many scientists in the past thought that light could reach any distance instantly and at an unlimited speed. One of the first people to attempt to measure the speed of light was a Italian physicist, Galileo Galilei. He created a very rudimentary experiment in the early 17th century in which two individuals holding covered lamps stood a certain distance apart. When one individual opened his lantern, the other followed suit as soon as he noticed the light. Galileo tried to measure the interval between lantern signals, but as you might expect, he was unsuccessful because the distance was too small and the light moved too quickly for him to measure it this way. Ole Rema, a Danish astronomer, demonstrated that light moves at a limited speed in about 1676. He observed that the eclipses of Jupiter's moons occurred sooner than expected when the Earth was closer to Jupiter and later than expected when it was farther away. According to Romer's theory, this is the result of light moving at a finite speed. Jupiter was further away, so it took longer to pay for itself. First non-astronomical measurement was credited to French scientist Hippolyte Fizeau in 1849. He employed a technique involving the transmission of light through a revolving tooth wheel and the reflection of that light back from a distant mirror. American scientist Albert Michelson performed one of the earliest accurate estimations of the speed of light in the 1920s. He was utilizing his revolving mirror device with eight sides. Today's formula was established as the speed of light in a vacuum in 1983 by an international commission on weights and measurements. At that speed, you could circle the equator seven and a half times in one second, or 299,792,458 meters per second, or 186,282 miles per second. However, the distance between learning the speed of light and traveling at it is enormous. It would take a very long time for humanity to witness that. But what exactly does traveling at the speed of light look like? What will be the overall experience exactly? The only positive aspect is how quickly you move. Just forget about anything sneaking up behind you because it will probably become dark behind you because the light cannot reach you. Therefore, there is no way to tell if a space monster is catching up to you. A rainbow of colors will most likely streak past as light from your sides passes. It is similar to when you are driving quickly. The tree is before you slowly approach before whooshing past in the blur. At such high speeds, anticipate a significant exaggeration of this phenomenon. Because it will be approaching faster than usual, the light in front of you will be intensely bright. You'll notice that things appear to move more quickly, causing a distant planet to spin more rapidly than usual. The light reflects of it as you get closer to it. If you want to know how, ask a race car driver. However, that is not the only way that the speed of light travel impacts your body physically. Keep in mind that E is equal to mc squared. You can't get away from it, so as you accelerate, you gain mass. This occurs as a result of atoms absorbing energy. You will become more massive as you run faster and faster, and your muscles may no longer be able to support your weight gain. Thus, you would become immobile and fall to the ground. Your ship is also impacted because it likely contains a variety of metals. The ship's components could expand at varying rates as it gains mass. Each atom has a unique mass and configuration and expands at a different rate. If this is the case, your ship may begin to disintegrate and release fuel and air at the speed of light. As your ship accelerates, it starts to disintegrate all around you. 
Time dilation is yet another complication. Time dilation is the actual time difference between two events as measured by observers who are moving in relation to one another or are not in the same location in relation to gravitational masses. Because of this, after spending six months in orbit, astronauts returning to the International Space Station have moved forward 0.007 seconds in time. They haven't advanced in time, of course. They age more slowly than the rest of us. Let's take Alpha Centauri as an illustration. We'll assume that you can instantly accelerate to 99.9 .9 times the speed of light and immediately decelerate without perishing or destroying your ship. Although Alpha Centauri is 4.5 light years away, we will use a value of 4 to make calculations easier. In Earth time, it would take 2 weeks or 14 days to complete the journey at 99.9 .9 C for 4 years. You will only have 2 weeks, but everyone on Earth will have age 4 years. You can think of this particular dilation effect in one of two, two ways. Either time on the ship is moving 110 times more slowly than usual, or the distance you are traveling is 110 times shorter. It is the same thing in terms of both space and time. You still need to communicate with your mission command center, but due to the distance, any signal you send would take 4 years to reach Earth, assuming it is strong enough to be heard and understood. To let Mission Control know you are still alive even if you cannot transmit user data, it is likely that you would arrive in the system and conduct science for about a year before returning to Earth. Approximately 1.24 years of your time and 9 Earth years will have passed since your departure. Speed of light travel is the only way we can explore even the nearest star if we want to send astronauts, other humans, or probes there, despite all the terrifying scenarios and consequences. Despite potential drawbacks, scientists will seize the chance. What are the quickest things humans have created before we discuss how to go at the speed of light? Bullets can travel up to 2,600 miles per hour or 4,200 kilometers per hour, which is more than three times the speed of sound. NASA's X-3 jet plane has the fastest top speed of 7,000 miles per hour or 11,200 kilometers per hour. Although impressive, this is still a fraction of the speed of light. On the other hand, the fastest human-made objects are spacecraft, such as NASA's Parker Solar Probe. It took off from Earth in 2018 and flew through the sun's scorching atmosphere, reaching speeds of 330,000 miles per hour or 535,000 kilometers per hour using gravity. That is an incredible speed, but it is only 0.05 of the speed of light. How do we reach the speed of light? There are several instances of spacecraft traveling across space at the speed of light or faster in science fiction films. However, a theory explaining how faster than light travel might be feasible has recently been put forth in a research paper written by an American physicist. Eric Lenz, who worked at the German University of Göttingen, conducted the study. According to Lenz and his team, future travel to distant stars and planets may be feasible but only if spacecraft can outrun the speed of light. The most recent studies on the issue have focused on hypotheses beyond conventional theories of matter. To permit transit to speeds faster than the speed of light, they suggest creating fictitious particles and states of matter with particular physical characteristics. According to their report, it is impossible to find this form of stuff, or it cannot be produced in large enough quantities. The new report gives a potential technical solution more weight than theoretical research. The study outlines a strategy for enabling superfast travel by building a chain of what they refer to as solenons to serve as a framework for a robust propulsion system. A compact wave known as soliton moves with minimal energy loss while maintaining its speed. According to the research, this approach may enable movement at any rate. The method uses the very structure of space and time organized in a soliton to provide a solution to faster-than-light travel, according to a press release explaining the process. The results were recently published in the journal Classical and Quantum Gravity. Lent informed the news agency Reuters that such a warp drive technology could be used to sharply reduce travel times that so could make future travel to distant space objects possible. Lentz estimated that it would take between 50,000 70,000 years to go to Proxima Centauri using a conventional rocket fuel. His innovation will move at the speed of light. 
Therefore, a voyage using nuclear propulsion technology would take roughly 100 years, whereas a trip utilizing it would only take 4 years and 3 months. According to Lance, much more effort will be required to make the technique a reality. It would need to utilize less energy than current nuclear power reactors to be helpful. The solitons must also be developed and accelerated. That is our video for today. We hope you like it. Can we achieve speed of light travel? Share all of your thoughts with us in the comment section below. Well, that's all for now. This is Big Tech Media. See you again tomorrow. Keep in mind to like, share, and subscribe.